game in James Stadium, Tampa, Florida. This is the National Football League on CBS Week 3, and it's the undefeated Pittsburgh Steelers against the undefeated Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Today's game is brought to you in Sony High Definition. So let's take a look at the superstar spotlight, folks. Hines Ward in his 13th year plays with a joy and a viciousness that will eventually land him in the pro football passes in the second half and Charlie Batch makes his first start since December 30th 2007 at Baltimore he started his career with the Detroit Lions out of Eastern Michigan we'd like to apologize for some of the technical difficulties we're experiencing we'll try to sort it out as soon as possible Mendenhall and he runs over the right side Rondé Barber with the stop and he gains two yards offensively for the Pittsburgh Steelers Flozell Adams is at right tackle in his 13th year longtime member of the Dallas Cowboys they got him during the offseason Meanwhile, the backs and receivers, Heinz Ward just keeps doing it every year. 13th year out of Georgia, seven catches, 117 yards on the season. He's averaging close to 17 yards per catch. Second down and seven at the 17. Here's back rolling out of the pocket, throws, picked off, just like that. And the Bucks are in business, Talib. He was suspended week one, and he comes up with the interception. Well, guess what happens on the outside? You'll see here, it's coming all the way across. Wallace is coming all the way across. Tlaib just gets underneath, and you see Heinz Ward is well covered. He was the first option, and Rondé Barber snapped him off. Charlie Batch tried to go late to Wallace coming across and did not see Tlaib. He was blocked off by Rude, the linebacker underneath who screened off his vision, didn't know he was there. So the Bucks take over with great field position, first down and 10, at the 31. They hand it off, this is Cadillac Williams. Goes straight ahead and he may have gained a yard on the play, Lawrence Timmons in on the tackle for Pittsburgh. Josh Freeman in his second year out of Kansas State, 6'6", 248, big strong arm quarterback. 12 of 24, 178 yards in their 20 to 7 win at Carolina. He had two touchdowns, no picks. Was not sacked in the game for a quarterback rating of 102.4. Second down and nine at the 30. Freeman, short drop, underneath, caught at the 25 yard line. Timmons with the tackle. And reception made by Mike Williams, a gain of six. So let's take a look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneer offense. Kedrick Vincent, a former Steeler, now starting at left guard in Tampa in his 10th season. And the backs and receivers, keep your eye on Kellen Winslow. You know his father was a Hall of Famer last week. Four catches, 83 yards. And he's a big player on third down. Here's Strata. And Strata goes nowhere. Great pursuit by the Steeler defense. And it's only a gain of two. Yeah, this is a little misdirection. Watch, they fake the handoff to Williams and then get the little swing pass out to the other Williams. And he is stopped cold. And that's great defensive discipline. We said at the outset, Gus, this de Steeler defense, it's aggressive and all that, but they're disciplined. They do, the, they play this defense correctly all the time with aggression. That's why they're in position all the time, all the time. Brings off Connor Barth to attempt a 40-yarder in his career, 27 of 34. That one is up. And good. Bucks get on the board first, capitalizing on the interception thrown by Charlie Batch. Tlaib stepping in, making a play. And now the Buccaneers take a three to nothing lead on their home field. And you take a look at the hero and the GOAT. Talib with the interception on the left. Charlie Batch throwing the interception. He'll get another opportunity now. And Tony O'Brien brings it out of the end zone. Dives forward. 
and is chopped down at the 23-yard line. A 25-yard return. Preston Parker with the tackle on special teams for Tampa Bay. So Mike Tomlin in his fourth season as the head coach. And Steve, I tell you what, his team really shut down Tennessee last week. Well, it, the turnovers were the thing. I mean, you never see a team go in and just to completely rip the ball out of the hands of their opponent like the Steelers did a week ago. When you do that, Gus, you just don't, don't lose. You're just not going to lose the game when your defense makes the offense cough the ball up as many times as Tennessee did last week. First down, 10 of the 23. Batch throws it to Hines Ward. He scoops it up. And Ward gets over the 25, up to the 27. Now, very interesting story between Coach Tomlin and Raheem Morris. Not only did they coach together, not only are they friends, but they will admit to you that they're brothers. Yeah, they're, they're like brothers. That's the big, they're like big brother, little brother. Raheem, Raheem Morris and Mike Tomlin worked together a long time. They vacationed with their families twice this last offseason. That'll give you an idea of how close the friends they are. Second down and five and 28. Heath Miller in motion. And they hand it off, Mindenhall. And he runs right into a pile, a one-yard gain. Ryan Sims, closest man to the football. Very interesting when we talked to Coach Tomlin. We said, uh, so did you talk to Coach Morris this week? He said, yeah, I talked to him. What did he say, Steve? His mom needed a parking pass. <laughs> Let's take a look. There you see, they're close in age. They've worked together. And I'll tell you, when you're a quality, defensive quality control coach like Raheem Morris was, you are a grinder. All those guys, they're like monks. They sit in a dark room, watch film, and evaluate. It's a tough, tough job, but you learn a lot of football. Third down at four, the 29. Batch out of the shotgun, looking. Dumps it off, incomplete. Noel De Moore took his eyes off the football. Steelers three and out once again as the punt team goes up, comes on. Well, it's just a three-man rush. The Bucks drop way back into coverage, and this is a play you, you got to pull it in. I mean, you got to help your guy. Moeldy Moore's got to help Charlie Batch out and keep the team on the field. So the Steelers, Sepulveda sends it away. Spurlock back deep, lets it take a bounce. And it will be down inside the 10 yard line. That's a 62 yard punt by Daniel Sepulveda. Tampa Bay with the football and the lead. Back after this. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Allstate, dollar for dollar. Nobody protects you like Allstate. And by Budweiser. Grab some buds and be part of the Budweiser National Happy Hour on September 29th. Welcome back to Tampa. Beautiful day, 85 degrees, humid Florida weather. Bucks with the football now. At the nine yard line, first down and 10. Cadillac Williams in the backfield. Josh Freeman out of the shotgun. Freeman to the far side. Whoa, Lamar Woodley. Got a hand on the football. And this Steeler defense, a ball hawking defense. Well, that's the thing. When you've got a great defense, Gus, the reason the Steelers are great, it's not because they run a 3 4, it's not because they do all this stuff is because they've got great players. Woodley on one side, Harrison on the other, Palomalu back there. you got three very unselfish defensive linemen and Smith, Hope, Kiesel, Hampton's in there today. I mean, they are an amazing bunch of guys. They play this defense just perfectly. Second down and 10 of the nine-yard line. The handoff, Cadillac Williams and Troy Palomalu came out of nowhere. Right, no piece of Only a one-yard gain. Let's Meet the Steeler defense, who forced seven turnovers, their most in the game since 97 versus Baltimore against Tennessee last week. Casey Hampton, the man in the middle, keeps rolling. Tenth year out of Texas. Meanwhile, the linebackers, some of the best in football. James Harrison, last week, nine tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles, a fumble recovery as well. And then there's the Tasmanian Devil, one of the best, if not the best, in all of football at strong safety. Third down and, and nine at the 10, and there's the architect. Hall of Famer Dick LeBeau. Freeman steps up in the pocket, wants to run. He better get down. 
Gets to the 15-yard line. Kiesel tracks him down from behind. And it's a gain of five, and the Buccaneers will be forced to punt it away. Man, this is one of the key things. Now, Josh Freeman steps up, and he makes a nice little scramble here, but this is why you get into a third and nine, and you're not going to convert it. If he scrambles for five yards on a third and five, he'll get that. The first and, t first and ten, second and ten downs are what's really going to be a factor in this game. Not too many offenses can make hay against these two defenses on first and second down. Chris Bryant running from his own goal line. Antoine Randall L back with the Steelers. Fields it at the 46. And Antoine Randall gets the football inside. Buccaneer territory, 38-yard punt, 8-yard return. Adam Hayward with the tackle. Welcome back to Tampa. Watch fantasy football today to get the last-minute news and analysis you need to set your fantasy lineup. It's live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, only at CBSSports.com. Three to nothing. Tampa with the lead over the Steelers. However, Pittsburgh with the football at the Tampa 45-yard line. Mike Tomlin, what an energetic, positive, focused, organized man. Such a pleasure, Steve, to spend time with them yesterday. Yeah, it really was. It's easy to sit down and talk with them and understand why the Pittsburgh Steelers play hard for him. First down and 10 at the 45. Antoine Randall hit a quarterback. They're showing some wildcat. He played quarterback at Indiana. Here's the reverse. Mike Wallace gets struck down. Beautiful tackle by Hayes and Styles White. A loss of one. Well, we spoke to Barrett Rude on Friday, and he told us the Steelers do a lot of They'll do some trickery. You've got to stay at home and be disciplined. And when an offense is struggling, Gus, and, you know, you really can't depend on your running back, you don't know if your quarterback's going to play, you've got to get everybody involved. Running a wildcat reverse is one way to do it. The trouble is the Buccaneers are a pretty good defense themselves. A loss of one on the play. Second down and 11 at the 46. Play fake. Back setting up in the pocket. With time down the field for Wallace. Touchdown! Whoa! Charlie Back let it fly. 46 yards. Well, and you can hear the crowd roaring. That's because there's one or two Pittsburgh Steelers fans here. The Steelers not only travel well with their defense, they bring a lot of people with them. Cody Grimm has got this covered. He just doesn't find the football. As he's running down, look as he's got his back turned. That ball's up for grabs. And Grimm just can't make a play on it because he doesn't turn around and look for it. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. They had it covered, Gus. They just couldn't make the play. So the super fast Mike Wallace catches a touchdown for 46 yards. And for Charlie Batch, his 58th career touchdown pass. And the Steelers take a 7-3 lead in Tampa. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. And by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. Welcome back. How about Charlie Batch? His first touchdown pass since 2007 when he threw two in a game against the Baltimore Ravens. He's making his fifth career start with Pittsburgh. And after throwing the pick on his first series, he comes back and throws a bomb for six. Spurlock. The return man trying to bounce it outside, and Spurlock goes down at the 21-yard line. An 18-yard return, Antonio Brown, the rookie, making the tackle on special teams. Well, that's also why, you know, Charlie Bratch being a 13-year veteran, Gus, that's the beauty of it. He throws a pick on the first, on the first series. You see a player down. There's Charlie, and yesterday, Ryan Monday down on the field, talking to him. He's really been patient, Steve, waiting his turn. He has been looking for another opportunity to play. He's been hot behind Byron Leftwich, behind Dennis Dixon. Now he gets the big start. Successful so far. Steelers up 7-3. 
watching the NFL on CBS. Ryan Monday shaking up on the play. Second year player out of West Virginia. Walked out on his own. He's been kind of massaging his hand. So we will update you on his status as soon as we know something. First down and 10. At the 21 yard line. Cadillac Williams. With running room breaking tackles and he gets to the 31. James Ferrier with the stop, but it's a gain of nine. But a flag on the play. On the far side at the 20. The illegal formation. Number 65 offense was not on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. First down. That's a right tackle, Jeremy Trueblood. Yeah, look, you can see it's like, wait a minute, how about a little heads up? You know, usually the officials will tell you to start snugging up. They'll you know, offensive linemen start to back up off the line of scrimmage because it gives them a little bit more margin of error against a fast pass rusher. True Blood starting to edge back, and you saw him give the official a hand. The officials will sometimes say, hey, you're getting too far back, move up. In that case, they didn't give him a warning, they just threw the flag. So first down of 15 at the 16-yard line. Williams trying to break it back, no word. First man to him. Ryan Clark, no gain on the play. Now, Tampa Bay running back Cadillac Williams was named the league's offensive rookie of the year in 05, finishing with over 1,100 yards. But knee injuries ended his season early in 07 and in 08. Williams bounced back last season, rushing for 823 yards, though, the most since his rookie year. And the last thing you want is to have a nine-yard run on first down, get called back for an illegal formation, which is just what happened to the Bucs. You've got to stay on schedule with down and distance against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down at 15. Freeman, the throw. Three on the run. Nice throw, nice catch. Mike Williams. First down, Tampa. The crossing route. Taylor and Clark combining on the tackle. But on second and 15, he gains 17 and picks up a first down. Well, and this is to give you an idea of why Josh Freeman is starting to raise some eyebrows here in Tampa Bay. He steps up away from the pocket and finds Williams on the crossing route. And that's exactly what Pittsburgh Steelers fans have come to know in Pittsburgh with Ben Roethlisberger, a big, strong quarterback with awareness of the pocket, just steps away, lets the play develop, and makes a play late. First down and 10 at the 32 last week. Williams, two catches, 54 yards. Here's Freeman, all day to throw. Down the sideline. Incomplete, almost picked off by Ike Taylor. And looks like there was some miscommunication on the route. Well, Freeman didn't miscommunicate. You'll watch here, Mike Williams comes out, he does the double move, and Ike Taylor wants no part of it. He's all over it, he knows the double move. Freeman, on the other hand, he's got plenty of time, but Gus, you, your receivers, even if they think they're covered, you can't stop running. Freeman's got to get that out of there. The receivers don't understand that they're into the route, that their quarterback is still getting rushed. Just because they're covered doesn't mean the quarterback is going to eat the ball. Second down and 10 at the 32. LeGarrette Blunt comes in, rookie out of Oregon at running back. They give him the ball over the right side. Oh, ground and pound. First down, Tampa, as he gets to the 45, a gain of 12. Troy Palomalu had to hang on and go for a ride. That's a nice, tough run by Blunt. Watch him as he steps up through there, gets a crease, and this is it. See, Woodley gets turned and had his back to the play. And look at the block outside by the wide receiver. What a great job. These guys, these wide receivers, if you watch this team, the wide receivers are nasty. They get after it. Great job by wide receiver coach Eric Yarber. I spoke to him over the weekend. What a great, enthusiastic coach he is. First down and 10 of the 44. Play action. Freeman steps up, dumps it over the middle. Cadillac. And Cadillac Williams gets to the 46-yard line. A gain of 10. Lawrence Timmons with the tackle. Time now to check in with James Brown in New York for an NFL update. Gus and Steve, after spotting the Saints a 7-0 lead, Atlanta answers back on third and seven with Matt Ryan. Hooks up with a 14-year veteran, the tight end, Tony Gonzalez. That evens it at 7-all. Hey, Gus, how does it feel to be working with a guy who is was as intense a player as Troy Palomalo? No doubt about it. Steve who's, he, Tasker, who's he talking about? He's talking about you, seven-time Pro Bowler. First down and 10 at the 45. 
And look at the Bucks. Steve, they are determined to run the football. Garrett Blunt again. Kiesel with the tackle downfield after a gain of four. Well, it's it's really good job by the offensive line up front, and it's a really a, a, a situation, Gus, where you've got a great defense. Steelers are not playing bad defense, but when they don't know if you're going to throw or pass, and when your quarterback steps up, makes one or two plays in the passing game, you, the defense starts to try and defend both. And in the offense in the NFL, you can't defend both. You've got to defend the run or the pass. Seventh play of the drive that started at the tap of 21, second and six. They run it again, and it's Blunt, the rookie, going forward. Picks up two. Timmons stops him again. Cleveland taking off Baltimore today. Here's JB in New York. Hey, Gus and Steve, Baltimore trying to improve on their 31st ranking offensively as Joe Flacco play action. Hooks up here with Anquan Bolden, an eight-yard strike in the back of the end zone. Baltimore out in front of Cleveland, 7-3, late in the first. Gus and Steve. All right, James, third down at four at the 39 for Tampa. And this is where Tampa's got to stay, Gus. Did you see him shift on offense? Third and less than five. Gives Josh Freeman a chance to look for the pass and pull it down and run it. Freeman. Pulls it down, spins out of trouble. Oh! He bounces it outside. Picks up the first and walks out of bounds with the first down. And you said it, partner. That's a gain of 11. And you see there why he's, he's getting such accolades here in Tampa Bay. He bent the pocket collapse. The Steelers get good pressure, but he's a big guy. He rolls out, and that move right there gets the first down. And then it, nothing's more frustrating, Gus. You see a quarterback do this. They come up, they make a guy miss, and then you step out of bounds, and the defense never touches them. That's frustrating for the Steelers. Only in his second year. Kind of reminds you, plays a lot like Ben Roethlisberger. Big, strong, mobile quarterback. First and 10 at the 28. Freeman to throw it on first down. Fine time. Underneath, incomplete. Intended for Williams out of the backfield. Timmons as well as Harrison covering on the play. That was a nice job by Timmons, laid out and got a hand on that ball. Thought he might caught, catch it, but you see there also in the pocket, the poise by Freeman. It looked like he was gonna break out, run to his right, then he just stopped and backpedaled further. And you know, strong arm quarterbacks can do that, Gus. They can drop back 15 yards and still deliver that ball, and Freeman's one of those guys. Second down of 10 of the 28. Preston and Blunt in the backfield, offset eye, here's Blunt, over the right side, gets to the 20. And I tell you what, Steve, this Tampa offensive line on this series are really firing off the football, the right side of the right guard, Joseph, and right tackle, True Blunt. Yeah, and Blunt is a guy, this is a six foot, 250 pound back, so he's got some heft. And it looks like the Bucks like the way he's running up inside. He's made a, a number of good runs. Hasn't been here all that long. They picked him up off waivers from Tennessee, but they're getting him in the game here early on. Carnell Williams back in the game. Third down and two at the 20. Freeman with time. Jr., a big third down receiver. Lamar Woodley got a hand on it, but he picks up 13. Guys, I, I played a little bit of wide receiver in this league. It, when a ball's tipped, it's almost impossible to catch, and he gets a piece of it. You gotta be kidding me. That is an outstanding catch by Kellen Winslow. Yeah, I can't tell you, you concentrate on the ball so much, and when it's tipped, it's so hard to gather it back in. Great job by Woodley getting a hand on it. You'd think that pass was defended, but not so. All nine of his catches on the season have been on third down. First and goal at the seven. Freeman trips, gets up, and goes down. James Ferrier covering him up. So that brings up second and goal. Yeah, this play is made right down in front by, by, by Hampton, who just blows into the center and the center takes a step back and Freeman takes a step back with the opposite foot and he had stepped on he can't get out that play was made by Casey Hampton he didn't get credit for the sack 
Battle of two undefeateds as we come to the end of the first quarter. Seven to three, Steelers will return to Tampa after these messages. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Steelers have only allowed one touchdown this season. Tampa Bay on the year, six possessions in the red zone, two touchdowns, two field goals. Thirteenth play of the drive. Second down and goal at the ten for young Josh Freeman. Cadillac Williams in the backfield. He's going to throw it. In the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Kellen Winslow. That one thrown high and brings up third down and goal. Yeah, and that was a pass that would have been open. That was an almost impossible throw. Freeman tried to get it in. Maybe Winslow would go up and get it. But that was a kind of a really more of a throwaway than a, an attempt to complete. You, you can't say enough about what that first down stumble by Freeman meant. Now it's third and goal. And they missed one down completely. Third down and goal. Freeman, Freeman out of the shotgun. Freeman underneath. And they will be short. Good defense by the Steelers as William Gay comes up and makes the tackle. And that will bring on the field goal. Four-yard game. One thing I'm noticing early on as we start the second quarter here, Gus, Josh Freeman has excellent pass protection. Steelers are rushing four guys and they're not getting there. And at some point during this game, you know the Steelers are going to start sending extra guys and more pressure and getting more complicated up front. But for right now, Josh Freeman is staying very clean in the pocket. Connor Barth, good from 40 yards. This one will be from 24 yards away. And it's good. Start of the second quarter. Steelers seven, Buccaneers six. Welcome back, and as you take a look at the weather, it feels like 95 out there. Steelers with those black jerseys, Steve, trying to stay out of the sun. Yeah, the Buccaneers didn't cut them any breaks. Buccaneers wearing all white, and the Steelers all that black jersey with the gold pants. It's hot, Gus, and that is going to be a factor. Antonio Brown. And Antonio Brown, the rookie out of Central Michigan, crosses the 30-yard line, an 18-yard return. It's not too late to play NFL.com's all-new fantasy football game. The first and only game with video, play with your friends or compete against other NFL fans. Sign up at NFL.com slash fantasy. The cool, they got cool zones for people to stand around and spray in fans. But no, they don't give those to Steelers. They give them to the Steeler fans here. I see a Steeler fan there using it. First down at 10 of the 33 for Pittsburgh. Mendenhall in the backfield. Hides Ward in motion. Here's Mendenhall straight ahead. Bounces it outside. Beautiful spin. Mendenhall gets close to midfield as he picks up 15 with quick feet. Rude and Jones on the tackle. Uh, what a nice, I don't know, stylish run here. Nice little, little spin. And, and that's nice because, you, you know, even if you get a hand on him, he spins out of it. You can't have anything to grab onto. That's exactly the kind of run the Steelers have got to put together against this Buck defense. Both offenses got to stay balanced. Mendenhall last week, 23 carries, 69 yards. Last season, he ran for over 1,000, seven touchdowns, three 100-yard games. He gets it again, turns the corner, leans forward, and gets to the 47. Gain of four as Rondé Barber trips him up. And both these clubs just so committed to the run, Gus, because they know their defenses can hang in there. You know, it gives them a chance that even if you're not in the lead, if you're trailing, you, know, you can still hand it to your running back. You know your defense is going to be able to keep it close to stay balanced, and really that's the way and that's the thing that leads to big plays. We've already seen it once from the Steelers on the long touchdown pass, and they may see it again. Second down at six at the 48-yard line. Keith Miller in motion. 
That gives it to Mindenhall. And he's wrestled down at the line of scrimmage. No game. Tim Crowder, fourth year player out of Texas. First man to him. And that brings up third down and six at the 48. Yeah. When you, when you run the football effectively, Gus, it sets up so many other things for your offense, most notably in the passing game. And that's that's why I said that you know a big, there's going to be big plays in this game, even against these great defenses, because both teams are going to be able to stay committed to the ground game. Four receivers set for the Steelers. Isaac Redmond checks in in the backfield for Charlie Batch out of the gun on third and six at the 48. They need to go to the 42 for a first down. Batch in trouble, and he runs it. Charlie Batch picks up the first down and more. Charlie Batch down inside the 25. On third and six, he picks up 24. Sean Jones with the tackle. You know, we spoke to him, Gus, and we said at the outset he was excited about this opportunity, and I, and I thought the Steelers would get a little offensive boost from him, and... You know, this is something Charlie Batch could do. Byron Leftwich couldn't do this. And there was some thought that Byron Leftwich might be the starter day early in the week, but Charlie Batch, they went to him, and I think that's part of the benefit of going to a guy like Charlie Batch. First down and 10 of the 24. Batch to throw it. Over the middle. Middle. First down, Pittsburgh. They are moving and grooving now on offense. 21-yard gain for Heath Miller. Yeah, and this is a straight drop back pass. And the underneath zone split apart. Leave Miller knowing they've got safety help over the top. But Batch fits it right in, splits the defense right down the middle of the football field. And Heath Miller right where he's supposed to be in the dead spot, right in the zone between the two defenders. In the red zone this year. Pittsburgh, six possessions, no touchdown, six field goals. The only team in the NFL with no red zone TDs. Mendenhall, and that'll end. He gets in and scores. A three-yard touchdown run by Mendenhall. And the Steelers take a 13-6 lead. And that is the difference in football teams in the NFL, Gus. A few minutes ago, we just saw the Buccaneers have a first and goal. They couldn't punch it in, and the Steelers do. Right into the end zone. Touchdowns compared to field goals are going to be the difference in this game, and the Buccaneers have to answer. Richard Mendenhall. As the Steelers now bring in Jeff Reed for the extra point. It's up and good. Six plays, 67 yards. Steelers eat up 349. Six the hard way. 14 6. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by the new Silver Bullet Aluminum Pint from Coors Light, official beer sponsor of the NFL. Direct TV. Watch your favorite team wherever you live. Only on Direct TV. Call to switch today. And by Ford. Drive one. Welcome back, Steelers with a 14-6 lead as you take a look at the summary and the key play on the drive. Charlie Batch on third and six, scrambles for a career long, 24 yards to pick up the first down and keep the drive alive. Pittsburgh sends it away. Spurlock from the two. And Spurlock crosses the 20 up to the 23-yard line. Will Allen stops him a 21 yard return let's see what young josh freeman can do his team down 14-6 last drive for the bucks longest of the season but it ended with only three points as opposed to a touchdown first down now for freeman at his own 23 yard line graham and cadillac williams line up in the eye Freeman underneath, and the ball is caught by Williams on the move. Bounces it outside and gets to the 45. Ike Taylor stops him, but it's a gain of 22. And they are so excited about Mike Williams, his rookie out of Syracuse. And it's just a quick slant. The ball comes out right on time. 
the perfect route for the perfect defense to run it against. Mike Williams trying to make a lot of things happen. You know sooner or later that pursuit's going to catch up to him, but you're right, Gus. They're excited about his ability to make a big play like that, and they like his poise with the ball in his hands. First down and 10 at the 45. Williams three catches, 44 yards. The handoff, Cadillac. And he's got a big opening, gets to the 45, but a flag in the backfield. And this one's coming back. Holding, number 75 offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. It was a very late flag on Joseph. The left guard, or the right guard, I'm sorry, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And those are killers, Gus. What's well, right in the backfield, it happens very late. Working right here. And he just lands on him and lays on him. I, maybe he's got his hand here. Yeah, yeah, there it is right here. Working against Aaron Smith. He just couldn't get enough of him. First down and 20 at the 35. Freeman. And Freeman, nobody to throw to. Great coverage in the Pittsburgh secondary. Lawrence Timmons stopping Josh Freeman after a one-yard gain. Everybody covered downfield. Yeah, I had three guys into the, into the coverage. Three guys into the route, and then everybody else just watching out. You see great coverage there by Taylor on the far side. And now at the bottom, Maddox. McFadden is, you know, it's... That play was there early, but it had to be on time, and he was the second read or third read. Freeman never got to him. Second down, they try a screen, and they get it. Some running room, a loose ball, picked up by Pittsburgh. Clark, looking for a block. And the Steelers have it at the 44. Gus, I spoke to offensive coordinator Greg Olson, and he said job one in this game is ball security. We cannot turn the football over and expect to win. This was a nice job by Williams at the outset. Then he gets spun around, and the ball just bounces out hard and goes right into the arms of Clark. And he was not down. No, he sat right on top of Foot Farrier, and the ball just came flying out. 14-6. Mike Williams has had a very good first half, but as you mentioned, ball security already, always an issue. He is a rookie. First down and 10 from the 44 for Charlie Batch, who's looked terrific since throwing that interception on their opening drive. Mendenhall. And he gets to the 42. Stopped by Rude, the middle linebacker. The linebackers for this Tampa team, very fast. Quincy Black, Barrett Rude, and Gino Hayes. As Williams has an opportunity to sit by himself, Steve, yeah. after coughing that football up. Yeah, you kind of look for a place to be by yourself. <laughs> Nobody wants to sit by him. <laughs> He'll get another chance. Second down and seven at the 41. Minden Hall. The single setback. Hines Ward in motion. He's been quiet thus far. Here's Bats down the field. Wallace. Oh, he got it again. Mike Wallace. What concentration. 41 yards. And listen to this, please. You feel like you're in downtown Pittsburgh. Talib once again on the last touchdown. The Bucks had it covered. Talib's on the outside. He's got a bead on the ball. Wallace goes up for it. Talib goes up for it. And Talib has his hands on it and tips it right to Wallace. That goes from being a pickoff in the end zone to a touchdown just like that. And the Bucks are down 20 to 6 with an extra point coming. Wallace, two catches. 87 yards and two touchdowns already for you fantasy league guys out there. 21-6.
Charlie Batch coming off the bench today. He looks like Johnny U. 21-6 Pittsburgh. NFL on CBS is sponsored by New Degree Men Adventure and by E-Trade. Welcome back. 21-6 Pittsburgh. Steelers trying to go 3-0 as you take a look at the drive, the big play, the touchdown. To Wallace, a 41-yarder. How about Charlie Batch, though? Steve, his arm strength and accuracy look terrific today after that shaky start. Spurlock. That's Spurlock over the 25, up to the 28. Will Allen with the tackle, 21-yard return. When you look back, here's the a look at the fumble. Ferrier comes in, spins him to the ground. That ball just pops out. I mean. Nobody even really grabbed it. I mean, it just, the, it was the shock of the force of dropping down that knocked it out. And then here's the TD, a little play action fake. Wallace comes out and Talib, I mean, right into his hands. And he just tipped it up in the air. Wallace comes down with it, touchdown. I mean, that's, you know, Talib's got to be looking at himself going, you got to be kidding me. He was all over that play and it turned into a touchdown. First down at 10 of the 28, you get a feeling Mike Wallace isn't through. Williams. And he gets to the 30, gains a couple. James Harrison with the tackle. Really nice sitting there talking to James Harrison yesterday, Steve. Uh, here's a guy that is a, a man of very few words. And what I thought was most interesting when we referred to him as a superstar linebacker, he said, no, I'm not a superstar linebacker. I'm a lucky linebacker that plays in a system with a legendary coach who we would die for that highlights linebackers. That's right. He, he's on a good system that highlights his abilities. Plus, you're right, Dick LeBeau knows how to use athletes on defense, and the P Pittsburgh Steelers show it off every Sunday. Second down and eight at the 30. Here comes the blitz. They pick it up. Freeman flushed out of the pocket. Freeman, and he has to duck it. I'm talking about James Harrison. He led the way in the Steelers' win against Tennessee last week, finishing with nine tackles, two sacks, two forced fumbles, and a fumble recovery in their 19-11 win over Tennessee as they shut down Chris Johnson. I'll tell you what, they, they got some pressure on Vince Young. They, that defensive front took Vince Young and tried to drive him into the ground like a tent stake a couple of times. Third down and eight at the 30. Freeman in the shotgun. Freeman underneath. Nice throw. Beautiful catch by Spurlock. And he picks up a first down, a gain of 11. McFadden tackles him, but a flag on the play. Yeah, late flag for a late hit. After the runner was down, personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, number 57 of the defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. You know, Kieran Fox comes in late just to clean up on the tackle. and. It's one of, he wasn't even really, I mean, it's not like he went after the guy, but he came in and, I mean, that, yeah, it's a nice hit, but it's not vicious. It's just one of those things, it's a rule. They're going to call it every time, and out in the middle of space, you just can't do that. You know, you just can't do that. Get there a little quicker. So they add yardage on to the gain, first and ten now at the Pittsburgh 45. Freeman fumbles the snap, picks it up. Yeah, that's the second time they've had trouble with the exchange. Once he got stepped on, couldn't pull himself out. And then this time, that's just a fumble exchange. And those are, you know, Gus, those are just missed opportunities and wasted downs that really tend to eat away your ability to be effective. But I'll tell you what, Gus, I am surprised both these offenses moving the football pretty well against both these quality defenses. It's a really good football game, but surprisingly good offense in this game. Second and 10 at the 45. Freeman rolls out of the pocket. Looking. Wow, he had a wide open receiver crossing the field. Jeremy Stevens, backup tight end, was wide open, but he just couldn't see him. And that's a two-yard game. 
Yeah, I'll tell you what. You come out, it's easy to say, you're right, Gus, we're sitting up here. There's Jeremy Stevens coming right down out on the 20 by himself. And I mean, I got I to, you know, say, hey, I get it. Josh Freeman's running away from the Pittsburgh Spe Steeler defense. I mean, you got time to look down the middle of the field. Just get out of bounds and, and live to fight another day. Third down at seven at the 42. They need to go to the 35 for a first. Freeman underneath incomplete. Keller Winslow, the intended receiver. Brian McFadden sitting on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, and that's what happens. You waste it down on first down by fumbling the snap, and you end up in a third and eight instead of maybe a third and five. It's a nice job by McFadden breaking up off the outside receiver Spurlock and going up and hitting Winslow to knock the ball loose. Chris Bryan will punt it away from the 42. 13 punts this season, no touchbacks. He's landed three inside the 20. Antoine Randall back deep. This is the Aussie end over end punt. And Randall fields it at the 21. 4-18 to play in the first half. Steelers look good, 21-6. Welcome back, and don't forget, coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join J.B., Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cowher for all the latest NFL scores and highlights that's coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report. Pittsburgh takes over at their own 21-yard line, leading 21-6. Charlie Batch, after throwing an interception on their first series, has been terrific. Back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back touchdowns for the Steelers. First down and 10. Mendenhall around the corner, following his blocks down the sideline. Beautiful piece of running as he gets to the 35 and gains 12. One of the things that's happening is the Steelers are starting to run right at the Buccaneer linebackers. What they're doing is they're, they're putting the defensive line down inside. They'll trap these defensive linemen down inside and let those linebackers run to the edge and then just get physical. The Buck linebackers like Barrett Rude, Geno Hayes, and Quincy Black. Black's a nice pass rusher. Rude is a guy that can play coverage. They're not big and physical, but they're very fast. They're matching up on the outside and pushing them around. First down at the 34. Redmond, Mendenhall in the backfield. Mendenhall again. And they check him down from behind. Nicely done. Styles White, Rondé Barber in on the play, a loss of one. How about Rondé Barber, the brother of Tiki Barber? Barber, an ageless type player, two games, two interceptions. And it seems like every year he's there, all-time leader in interceptions for this Tampa organization. 14 years is a long career for anybody playing corner, a, a, a position that's really physically demanding and has certain standards you have to be at in order just to get on the field let alone play well, as a real testament to the physical condition he keeps himself in. Second down and 11 at the 33. Charlie Batch dumps it off to the tight end, Heath Miller. And Miller crosses the 35 up to the 37, four-yard gain. Miller came into this game with six catches, 43 yards. Quincy Black stops him. Got a couple of catches today. And that's a nice play call, a safe, kind of a safe completion, go for a screen pass on a second and long to get a little bit of it back, give yourself a chance on third down. There's no question the Steelers, I don't think, I think the Bucks have got to play coverage here. There's no question the Steelers are going to have to air it out to get this first down. Third down and seven at the 37. Back over the middle. Antoine Randall first down midfield, Pittsburgh. Gain of 13. Well, working against EJ Biggers. And there you see over the top coming in, Sean Jones. They just can't clamp him down. That's an easy completion on a blitz play. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Steelers still moving the ball up 21-6. Coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report, join JB, Dan Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cowher. And I'm sure Coach Cowher is happy with what he's seeing with his former team for all the latest NFL scores and highlights that's coming up on the Sprint Halftime Report.
First and ten at the 49. This is Mwede Moore. And he picks up five. Rodney Barber in on the play. No huddle being used now by Pittsburgh. A minute and 43 and counting. Batch gets his troops lined up quickly. Second and six. Batch. Oh, what a Mike Wallace again. And Charlie Batch puts some hot sauce on that one. A gain of 13. 127 to go. Time out on the field. 21-6. Pittsburgh. As you take a look at this graphic, fewest offensive touchdowns by a 2-0 team since 1960. The Steelers are on the list. But today, three touchdowns on their last three drives. Wallace, three catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns in the first half. First and ten. They set up a screen. Well, they more. And he is corralled at the 35. Styles White. Holds him up, and it's a loss of four on the play. You'll see here, this is just a quick screen. They're trying to make a little bit of something. One tackle missed and get up the field. But, you know, like we said just a minute ago, this Tampa Bay defense is so fast in the back end in the linebacking core. you got to have it happen real, right away or it's not going to. Second down. To the sideline, and it's Hyde's Ward, first catch of the day. Hyde's Ward turns it up and goes down at the 17, and Ward gains 19 on the play. Yeah, now you see, Hyde's Ward could have gotten out of bounds to stop the clock, but they, you know, they had the timeout left, so he was going to try and make a touchdown. When he turns it up, Barber tries to sweep him out. He tries to cut back in, and of course, Grimm is right there to stop him. Keeps the clock running. Mike Tomlin calls an immediate timeout, but you know you're willing to take that gamble at this point, up by 15 points, with and you had two timeouts left at that point anyway. So you know you may as well try and make a big play. And I don't think Mike Tomlin's all that upset. We told you about the old guys going at it today. Hines Ward. And Rondé Barber, Ward in his 13th year, Barber in his 14th, and Ward getting the better. Yeah, nine you know, Barber on that play. Nine Pro Bowls between them and three Super Bowls. And yeah, you're right. Uh, Heinz Ward got loose from Rondé Barber on that play and made the made the first down. First and ten at the 16. 43 seconds remaining. Charlie Batch in the shotgun. And Batch dumps it off. Moore cuts it inside and goes down at the nine. Stopped by Tlaib and Sean Jones. Now they'll spike the ball as quickly as they can, and that'll give them a chance if they can get it done with about 20 seconds left. Actually, 24 seconds or 23 seconds left. Now they've got a chance to throw the football at the end zone twice. And Pittsburgh has a timeout remaining with 23 seconds left. Charlie Batch has gotten hot. He's 10 of his last 11. And that, yeah, and that timeout also, Gus, Gives them a chance to make one running play as well if they want to. And that's going to be the crucial thing. If they're going to run the football once, they can pick their spot. It's third down. So, well, actually, it's third down. I thought it was second down. So now they're going to have to, they can do anything they want. They can run or pass to get this ball close. But the Bucks defense is going to have to defend both. Third down and three at the nine. Batch. Looking over the middle. The old man does it again. Hines Ward. <laughs> 79th career receiving touchdown for Hines Ward. Yeah, and this Tampa Bay defense is shell shocked. Hines Ward goes back. He just kind of gets like you see, kind of lets up, kind of looks and. This is me right here. You see, he knew he'd get up smiling as well. But that, he just, you know, he goes up to the back of the end zone and kind of cuts it down to half speed and looks for the dead spot. And Batch found him. 79 career receiving touchdowns for Hines Ward, the most in Steelers history, 16 more 
than Hall of Famer John Stallworth and how about Charlie Batch? What a first half. And Charlie Batch running into the right now going into the end zone going into the locker room now early for halftime to get a leg up on his preparation. You see there, what a great throw. Gives the pump fake outside, comes back to Hines Ward over the middle. And the Buccaneers have got to look around. They had two long touchdown passes hit on them that they had defended both times. It's Charlie Batch going to take it in early to halftime. Bruce Aarons there with Hines Ward, offensive coordinator. I mean, this is, you know, this is, you didn't expect this. I don't even think the Pittsburgh Steelers expected to score four touchdowns against the Buccaneer defense. And talking to them in meetings and the respect they had for these guys sitting on this bench, they just didn't think they were going to be able to get it done. But you throw in the two long tipped passes for touchdowns and, you know, things get out of hand quick. Sixteen seconds to play in the first half. 28-6 offensive explosion by the Pittsburgh Steelers as Reed kicks it deep. Spurlock brings it out of his own end zone. And Spurlock crosses the 15, gets to the 17-yard line. About a 19-yard return. Arnez battle with the tackle tonight. The CEO of one of the largest hotel chains in America goes undercover on the season premiere of Undercover Boss tonight. Only CBS. Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Game blacked out here in Tampa. This week. A lot of disappointed Will Buck Allen. fans and injured player on the field, Will Allen. Do you think the NFL, Steve, needs to loosen that rule a little bit about the blackouts, the non-sellouts? I mean, sometimes you see 2,000 tickets, 3,000 tickets. Yeah, but, you know, in some cities, some business entity or, well, some business entity will buy those tickets and uh, get it done. But I don't think they should change it. You see there lots of Pittsburgh Steeler fans making the way down to Florida. Here's... Allen hitting, hitting his the, back. Hitting the back. Allen has to be helped off the field. Not a good sign. We will update you as soon as we have something to report. So first down at the 19. Looks like the Bucks are going to take a knee. Yeah, they've got some regrouping to do at halftime, Gus. They're going to go in and see if they can get a handle on what was successful for them in the first half because they were not unsuccessful offensively, but they didn't, couldn't put it into the end zone. And of course, defensively, they're going to look at those two tip passes or two long passes that got away from them. But the Pittsburgh Steelers, Mike Tomlin got a great effort from his quarterback, Charlie Batch, in the first half, 10 of 14, 177 yards, Three touchdowns, one interception. We thought and conjectured in the open that they might get a little offensive lift from Charlie Batch. It looked just the opposite when on the first series, second or third play, he threw an interception. But as a veteran of 13 years, of course, he bounced back. He's on a good team. They rallied around him, made a couple of plays for him, and all of a sudden, they're up big at halftime. Mike Wallace also with 100 yards receiving, three catches, 100 yards, two touchdowns. As Pittsburgh heads into the locker room, leading it 28 to 6. And that's the end of the first half with the score 28 to 6, Steelers. 28 6, Pittsburgh with the lead at halftime on the road. Both these teams trying to remain undefeated. Gus Johnson, Steve Tasker, Charlie Batch. <laughs> wow. Three touchdowns. Uh, he, he started out, it looked like it was going to be a rough day. Pick right off the bat, and he comes back and gets gets his guys to make play. Wallace makes great plays. Heinz Ward in the back of the end zone. He scrambles for 24 yards to keep a drive alive to set up a score. The guy's done everything, and it's really been impressive to watch it. And this is one of those games I think everybody thought this game was going to be 10-6, you know, 9-6. And all of a sudden, you know, it's 28-6. And I'll tell you what, 
the Steelers are not the team you yeah. want to fall down to by 22 points. Not at all. Half. And now let's take a look at the points of protection presented by Allstate. Well, you look at what happened. I mean, Charlie Batch is career high, three touchdown passes. And I think that at the bottom there, you see Josh Freeman. They had some, some success protecting Josh Freeman, but as they started to fall further and further behind, you saw that pressure for the Steelers start to mount. As they got into more difficult and more desperate situations, Josh Freeman had to drop back more and more, and uh, that pressure started finding him. Tampa will receive to start the second half. 28 to six, our score, Jeff Reed teeing it up. Buccaneers will start from the one-yard line. Down the sideline. Parker. And Parker with a very nice return. Preston Parker, backup wide receiver, up today. A 37-yard return. And he does a nice job. It looked like for a minute he was going to be hemmed in, but he made a nice break to the outside. And this is something I think, Gus, when you see these return guys, one thing you never see him do because they're all so slight of build they don't break tackles but parker does a nice job shaking the guy off on the inside and getting an extra 15 or 20 yards out of him so josh freeman in at quarterback and in the first half freeman 8 of 14 85 yards good throw on first down dumps it out cadillac williams out of the backfield stood up and taken backwards Driven down hard by Lamar Woodley. And that's a two-yard gain as you take a look at the first half possession. You know, the thing that jumps out at you, you know, is just they only had that one stretch where they were successful and led to the field goal. And, of course, then they had the four play for the field goal at the top, which was after the turnover. But, you know, they only punted twice. So they had some success, moved the football, it seemed like. But, you know, there was a couple of three and outs that really hurt them. Second down and eight. At the 41. The handoff, Williams. Oh. And Williams, a lot of hitting going on. Casey Hampton in on the play, a one yard game. Yeah, you look at what happened to the first half with this Pittsburgh defense. They were all over the field, very disciplined, making plays. Troy Palomalu knifing in to tackle for get a tackle for a loss. I mean, it, they really, really played a solid game, and I think Dick LeBeau now, with this lead, is going to be able to dial up some pressure, particularly on third and long like this is. Third down and seven, as players telling us yesterday, that Dick LeBeau is a father figure to all of them on that defense. Freeman in trouble, and he's sacked. Great pressure coming around the corner, William Gay. Second sack of the day for Pittsburgh. And Tampa will have to punt, a yeah. loss of seven. Well, it's so difficult for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to identify. You see, nobody's in a three-point stance. They're all standing and milling around. They don't know who's going to come. Gay comes on the outside. And, of course, you're asking Donald Penn, the left tackle, to get all the way off the line of scrimmage and try and get a hand on him. He just can't do it. Gay coming all the way around the formation to make the tackle on the far side. Great pressure. Brian will punt. Antoine Randall back deep. And Randall L. coming up, fields it at the 36, 28-yard punt. 12.48 to play, third quarter. Here comes Charlie Batch and the Pittsburgh offense. And let's take a look at some of the pressure the Steelers have been able to apply yeah, on not, defense today. Not only the Steelers applying pressure, the Buccaneers can't get to Charlie Batch. Pittsburgh in the Wildcat. Antoine Randall, playing quarterback, hands it off. Mendenhall. And Mendenhall gets a gain of 16 black and grim with the tackle. And I always thought, you know, this is so successful. I always thought that a, a coaching staff would be well served if they ran this Wildcat, had a play like this, line up and run another one real quick and go no huddle, and that's never been done yet, and I'd like to see a team try that. I think that'd be a real asset and another wrinkle that a lot of teams would get a lot of benefit from in that Wildcat. Mendenhall, 10 carries, 57 yards and a touchdown. First down. Again, power running. He's wrestled down at the 45. 
A gain of two. Amazing first half for this man. Charlie Batch had started a game since 2007, and he uh, came in smoking. Yeah, and this is a team, the Steelers. I mean, Charlie Batch is no stranger. He's been there for a while. These guys know him. He's part of the family there in Pittsburgh. And this team rallied around him. I make no mistake, they wanted to play well with Charlie Batch back there taking snaps. And the entire team offense and defense is getting it done. Charlie, a Pittsburgh native in his ninth season with the Steelers. Coming over from Detroit as Hines Ward makes the catch and Rondé Barber tackles him. A loss of two. And when you talked to Charlie yesterday and he walked out of the room, I thought that uh, you had some interesting <laughs> comments on who you could see him being he looks when his career is over. He acts to me like a congressman. I mean, he acts like a public servant. I mean, a guy who could lead people in that arena. I mean, he really has, he's poised, he's articulate, intelligent. He's obviously a great communicator, being a quarterback on a football team. I just think you guys got a lot of qualities you like to see in guys like that. Third down and 10 at the 46. Batch with time. All day to throw. Dumps it off. Redmond out of the backfield. And Isaac Redmond, first full year out of Bowie State, the Bowie State Bulldog, picks up nine. And Mike, Mike Tomlin's giving him the uh, Heisman, telling the offense to stay on the field here on this fourth down and maybe two. Charlie Batch in the offense was starting to walk off, and Mike, Mike Tomlin gave him the stiff arm, and they're going to kind of go for it. Steelers trying to put the Buccaneers away. Yeah, now the, the play clock's getting down. They down to 11 seconds. They got to hurry up, but yeah, they got time now if they can get a snap. Fourth down and one at the 37. Five on the play clock. Redmond, a power runner. They get it off. He dives forward. I don't know. It's going to be close. Buccaneers say they stopped it. I think they're going to mark him a little bit short, and I think the problem was the bench couldn't decide whether to do it or not, and it took them too long. I think the players were just a little bit disconcerted by the by the slight play clock, and they didn't get it off. If they have a chance, if they had decided before that fourth down to go for it on fourth down, they might have gotten it. But the Bucks rose up and made a great stop. Steelers turn it over on down. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Sony. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Hey, welcome back. Gus Johnson, Steve Tasker with you from Tampa. 9.51 to play. Third quarter, Buccaneers take over. Blunt running, no, they throw it to the near side on a nice play fake. Troy Palomalo coming up and making the stick on Sammy Strotter, but it's a gain of four. And that was, I can't, I'll tell you, Troy Palomalu covered so much ground to make that play. That's, a, that's why the guy's so good. He saw it and read it, and he, made, he came all the way from center field to make this play, this hit on the outside. What you told me yesterday, Steve, it's becoming the most important position on defense. Williams with the catch out of the backfield, and he'll get to the 44. A gain of three, Lawrence Timmons there. And let's explain more with the task force. Well, Gus, these days you'll see, watch Troy Palomalu. This is him highlighted. He's going to look at the quarterback's eyes and come up and just roll the dice now watch as he comes up to make this play on the outside the cornerback rolls back to the inside and takes the deep route they switch the coverage palomalu steps in front and makes an easy interception on the sideline because the quarterback at the snap thought he was covering a completely different receiver third down and two at the 45 buccaneers three of eight on third down conversions freeman over the middle and it's caught Mike Williams dives forward, may have picked up the first down. Lawrence Timmons brings him down. Yes, he did. A gain of three. But as you were saying in our meeting yesterday, in our production meeting, when you look at the position, guys like 
you know, older guys like Sean Dawkins or guys like Ed Reed and Troy Palomalu and Bob Sanders in Indianapolis. Bob Sanders in Indianapolis. They Sharper changed the game. In New Orleans, yeah. I mean, there's a guy, that's that's the difference. It, it's become the pr premier position in football defensively. And if you're not a pass rusher, the safety position is the position that can change the game because so much of the game centers around the aerial attack these days. You've got to have a guy back there that can make plays. First down and 10 at the 47. Freeman in trouble again. Freeman doubled up and taken down. Nick Eason with the sack third of the day and that pocket now starting to collapse for Josh Freeman. Yeah, and you can tell that the Steelers have got a boatload of good players up front. Casey Hampton, Chris Hoke, Kiesel, Eason, Smith, Hood, all those guys run in and out. On a day like today, the defense really starts to get the advantage because they can run guys on and off the field. You don't have 10 offensive linemen that can come in and give those offensive linemen a rest. Sooner or later, it starts to wear on the offense as well as it does the defense, but the defense has fresh legs. A loss of nine on the play, second and 19 at the 38. Freeman out of the shotgun. Sets up the screen, knocked away. Oh, what a play by Ziggy Hood. The big fella showing his vertical leap at 6'3", 300 to get a hand on that football. Well, I'll tell you, he got a hand on it, and alertly, Josh Freeman knocks it away. This had interception, a tipped interception. Ziggy Hood, when he tips that up, he's thinking yes, touchdown. Yes, he is. You know he is. <laughs> He thinks I've got it. He gets a hand on this, sees the screen play. I mean, what an alert play by a 300-pounder. So that brings up third down and 19. Timeout on the field. 6.58 to play in the third. Back to Tampa after this. Twenty-eight six Pittsburgh, Tampa with the football at their own thirty-eight, facing a third down and nineteen. Cadillac Williams in the backfield with Josh Freeman. Freeman firing incomplete. Flag on the play at the thirty-one. This is going to be a hold. Holding, number 70. Penalties declined. Fourth down. Donald Penn, the left tackle. Yeah, and he just got bull rushed by James Harrison on the left side. I mean, right here, you're going to see it. James Harrison just gets leverage underneath his pads and goes in, goes right underneath Freeman. I'll tell you what, James Harrison isn't a very tall guy, but that guy is a big load on the pass rush. Antoine Randall back deep. Short kick again, and it's fielded at the 27. There's big James Harrison out of Kent State. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Chevrolet. Every model is backed by a 100,000-mile five-year powertrain limited warranty. And by Fidelity Investments. Turn here. Welcome back. 28-6. After we left, there were some late flags thrown. A little scrum on the field. Special teams guys pushing and shoving, Steve. Yeah, Adam Hayward for the Bucks came in. You see this scuffle. This isn't what the flag was flown, thrown for. Flag was thrown for that right there. And that was the flag, and it gave the Pittsburgh Steelers an extra 15 yards. You see it here again. They're trying to bring in this. Yeah, that, that right there is what got the penalty. And you, you wonder how they can let so much other stuff go and call stuff like that. I, you know, I... The officials are doing a pretty good job in this league, Gus, but sometimes it's you have to scratch your head as why they just say, you know, just go back to your bench and be quiet. <laughs> Spoken like a true special team player. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 41. Rashad Mendenhall has been terrific today as well. 11 carries, 59 yards. Straight ahead, Mendenhall. And he runs right into Sean Jones, gain of five. 
Both the Giants and Tennessee losing last week. Let's see what's happening today. Here's JB in New York. Right now, Gus, Giants are trailing by nine. Take a look at Vince Young here with time, looking back at the end zone, hooking up with Kenny Britt of Rutgers, capping a six-play, 51-yard drive. That came on a third and seven, 19-10. Tennessee, Gus, and Steve. All right, JB, so Vince Young pulled last week for Kerry Collins against these same Steelers. Looks like he's rallying today. Second down and five. Isaac Redmond in the game for Pittsburgh. Redmond. And Redmond spins forward. May have enough for the first down. Stopped by Rondé Barber. The new hit drama Hawaii 5-0 is TV's number one new show. Tune in and see why critics are calling it your next TV obsession. Hawaii 5-0 tomorrow on CBS. As this game progresses, you can see there. Yeah, they've, they're way ahead of their season average. And you know that as this game goes, the Steelers are going to do a lot of shifting, a lot of motion, and try and get the defense of the Bucks misaligned and then run it right at them. On third down, it's short. Just like that. Charlie Batch with the sneak. Your Buffalo Bills have struggled 0-2 to start. And... Uh, they're taking on Tom Brady and the Pats today. Here's JB again. And fighting hard, Gus. Take a look after Brady and Moss hooked up on a score. Take a look at C.J. Spiller on the kickoff return. 95 yards to pay dirt. Only a one-point lead is New England nursing that in the third. Back to Gus and Steve. All right, C.J. Spiller, the young man out of Clemson. A lot of promise and excitement about him in Buffalo. Well, he made a splash in the preseason. Man. But a lot of players do. First down and 10 at the 48. Mendenhall. Oh, there he goes. Did he get there? Down the sideline. Out of bounds. Grimm makes the saving tackle. And he finally popped it. Rashard Mendenhall picks up 34. Well, you're going to see it. Heinz Ward comes in and gets the backside. Well blocked at the point of attack. There's a crease there. Mendenhall just follows his blocking right up through. The Bucks got caught with about eight guys, nine guys at the line of scrimmage. And once you break through, there's just no secondary level to catch up. Cody Grimm was the final player that had a chance at him and managed to herd him out of bounds. So Mendenhall closing in on 100 yards rushing. We're still in the third quarter. They give it to him. And Mendenhall gets to the 11. Now that last play looked reminiscent to this play. Week one against Atlanta on Pittsburgh's first offensive play of overtime. Mendenhall took the handoff and broke away for a 50-yard touchdown, giving the Steelers a 15-9 win. That play looked identical, didn't it? I mean, it, the same play in overtime beat Won, won the game in week one. That was the exact same play, Gus, coming back to the right side and cutting it up inside with one guy to beat. Rashard Mendenhall, 14 carries, 101 yards, and a touchdown. Second and seven. They give it to him again. Skipping, leaning forward, and gets to the six. A five-yard gain. Quincy Black, first man to him. And you can tell the Steelers' offensive line is feeling really good. I mean, this is a, exactly the kind of game they love to play, and all offensive linemen do. You get a big lead, and you just dare the other team to make you throw the football. And you know, those, those big guys, they start talking to each other in there. They know the game plan now. They're going to go straight ahead blocking, push guys out of the way, and give a crease to the guy with the ball behind him. Give this man a lot of credit. What a great organizer on all three sides of the football. Empty backfield. Batch in trouble now. Batch breaks contain. Incomplete. He had David Johnson. Johnson just couldn't hold on and loses his footing as well. Yeah, Johnson tried to plant, come back for the ball. Batch does a nice job of avoiding the pressure. You see here, he tries to gun it. It's just a little behind. Johnson otherwise that's <laughs> Charlie Batch throws for his fourth touchdown today if he can complete that one as it is they'll try for three so Jeff Reed comes in to attempt a 24 yarder 
He knew that one got away from him. And it's good. Charlie Batch a little frustrated. He thought that he could have gotten another one. Steelers settle for three. Here at the third quarter. Up big. Thirty-one six Pittsburgh. Steelers without their Super Bowl winning quarterback Ben Roethlisberger for the first four weeks. They'll get him back week five. That is the bye week for Pittsburgh. They'll get a full week of practice before they'll have to go into a game. And what a job Coach Tomlin has done with this team. I mean, you have to really give him a lot of credit, right, Steve? Oh, oh sure. They, they, the Buccaneers haven't allowed a, a second-half point all season. That's the first points they've allowed. And to have the Steelers come in and put on this kind of performance with a guy that was their fourth string quarterback uh, is, is really something. Raheem Morris on the other side. His team off to a very good start. He's another young, impressive coach. They were... 0-7 to start the season last year in his first year. Finished with only three wins. Two wins now. Much more optimism in Tampa. First down and 10 at the 20. Freeman. Near side. Ball caught. Strouder. And Sammy gets it up to the 25. Stopped by Palomalu. Gain of five. Tonight, 11 teams take off. Off on the adventure of a lifetime. Don't miss the amazing races season premiere tonight after 60 minutes only CBS second down and five at the 25 far side Kellen Winslow caught and he's chopped down William Gay nice tackle as Winslow Gains four on second and five, so that brings up third down and short for Tampa as they get to the line of scrimmage. No huddle offense now as the Buccaneers try to change up the pace a bit. Yeah, and they're, they're going to try and play some situational football here, Gus, and try and, you know, Raheem Morris, I know he's thinking to himself, even though we're down, we're going to try and get better all the time, and this is a great opportunity to do it. Cadillac picks up the first down as he crosses 35, gains eight. Lamar Woodley, Ryan Clark with the tackle. Kellen Winslow making a nice block. There's an injured player on the field. You see here, working right there against Woodley and makes a nice block, allows the back to get behind him. Winslow trying to do his best to be an all-around tight end. You know he can catch passes. We've seen it time and time again. And that is Ryan Clark who's down. Let's see if we can get a look at knowing exactly how he was injured. Oh yeah. Just got caught up in the traffic there in the tackle. Seems to be all right as he walks off. That heat must wear you down after a while, though, it Steve. It does, but also, I've been in that situation, Gus, where you get hit, you think you're not going to be able to walk anywhere ever again in your history or your life. <laughs> and then, you know, after a minute or two, you get up and, you know, you're, you shake it off, and now you're back in in a play or two. It really is. You go from one extreme to the other. You have to do a little mental mental uh, checklist. Know, checklist to see if you're okay, and it takes a little bit to get through it sometimes. First down and 10 at the 37 for Freeman. Here comes a blitz. They set up a screen. Williams with a blocker in front of him. And Cadillac down the sideline. No, make that Graham. And Graham gets to the 15. Ernest Graham, the seventh year fullback out of Florida, gains 46. Well, and this is a this is well thought out. And if you're going to run a play, Gus, and it's going to be successful, you got to find Palomalu and get a hat on him. And what a nice job by Mike Williams staying after him. Just pestering him. Doesn't really lay him out, but gets a chance for Graham just to get by. And that's, how you, that's how you do it, Gus. Tough to block guys in space. But Williams did a great job. 31-6, end of the third. We'll be back after this.
31-6, Pittsburgh. But Tampa, Steve, finding a way to move the ball at the end of the third quarter. Yeah, big screen pass set him up for this first and 10 on the 17. Cadillac Williams back in the game, standing next to Freeman. This ball picked up! Watch this, Kiesel! Can he get a block? Look at the big fella! Oh, Kiesel cuts it back! Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Ha <laughs> ha! 79 yards! And he's huffing and puffing and strutting! The Steelers are loving it. And Steve, he's going to keep that ball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what a great play. And, he, you know, he got the great bounce off the tip pass. And the Steelers have really benefited from a couple of those today. One for a touchdown. Actually, now two for a touchdown. That one off, this one off the hands of Williams into the hands of Kiesel earlier. Tipped off the hands of Talib into the hands of Wallace for a touchdown. And the extra point is good. But what a play by a man that's six feet five, close to 300 pounds. You'll watch here, this is throwing this out to Strotter, and he just misses it. He, he feels the pressure coming as Gay lays the wood on him. No, that's not, no, that's Harrison. No wonder he didn't tip that. He knew he was going to get labeled, and he didn't pull it in. And I'll tell you what, you got to tip your hat to Kiesel. He knows he's not going to outrun anybody, so he waits for his guys to keep, keep up with him. They catch up, block Freeman, and get him into the end zone. I don't know. He looked like he had some fast feet to me, Steve, for D. Lyman. He looked quick. Well, that's because no, nobody else was in the screen. <laughs> his first career touchdown <laughs> and interception for Kiesel. Tough day, though. Josh Freeman. Well, you know, Gus, after that, he deserved better. I mean, it wasn't a bad throw. 31 straight points for Pittsburgh. Yeah, the Steelers know they're not alone in this stadium. This is turned, I mean, you get the Buck fans are kind of filing out. So Reed will send it away. Parker back deep. And he'll start from the eight. And drag down. Beautiful special teams play by Kieran Fox. But let's take another look at that beautiful return for touchdown by the big thumb. Well, and you got to the thing, he, well, he's got the ball in the right arm. And he comes a nice little hesitation move. Freeman's got to try and get him back. Now he cuts back inside between his two teammates and gets Esco. You can see. Now the funny thing about that is Ike Taylor and William Gay are backpedaling faster than, than he's running forward. I don't know, Steve. If I'm Rashard Mendenhall, I may be nervous. No, I'm not. No. Ike Taylor and William Gay were backpedaling in circles around him as he ran that into the end zone. First down and 10. Josh Freeman now and the Buccaneers here's an opportunity for Freeman to get in some good work Freeman to the far side Williams with the reception Fox with the tackle so Brett Kiesel 6'5", 285 oh, yeah, 32 as well I mean he's a nine year veteran Second down, Freeman again, over the middle, Cadillac, and Larry Foote comes up and makes a nice stick as Cadillac Williams picks up four. 
Yeah, now this defense comes out, and, and this is, you know, just like it was fun for the offensive line, running that football down, setting it up for that field goal. It's fun for the defense now. It's pass, pass, pass all the time for the Bucks, and the pass rushers love it. Over the middle, Williams, one more time, and he dives forward. May pick up the first down. Foot and Clark with the tackle. Looks like he did. Gain of 11. But how about this man, Coach LeBeau? As the players told us yesterday, father figure for most of these guys on defense. Really changed the way the game is played with this scheme. As Ernest Graham out of the backfield makes a catch. Newly inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, and very deserving. He's been five decades in the National Football League as player, coach, defensive coordinator, head coach. He's just, you talk to guys like Dick LeBeau, Gus, and they're like encyclopedias. You ask them about certain things that you see here. You ask them about things, Gus, and they just tell you the history of it, where it came from, how you defend it, how you attack it. They know everything. You see there, 52 years, Gus, in the, in the NFL. 38 as a coach. Seventh year with the Steelers. He's one of the, he really is one of the treasures in the National Football League. Freeman, sideline incomplete. Ball intended for Spurlock, but Brian McFadden right there. With a deep, deep comeback round right on the outside. Yeah. It's well defended. Exactly how you got to do it. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Big day for Charlie Batch, three touchdowns. Linden Hall over 100 yards and a score. Wallace, a 100-yard game, two touchdowns. Second and 10 for Freeman. Flushed out, and he'll get rid of it. Yeah, great Palomalo on the sideline. Says, put me in, coach. Don't tell me there are no Steeler fans here. Listen <laughs> to that crowd roar. He can't help it. You know, he sees a ball. He he's got to go get it. He's got to go get it. <laughs> Watch this. This comes out without the helmet. Oof. Can't help it. Just got to do it. You know, it's, we asked him, and I'll never forget it. They asked him, you know, you should cut your hair because you can't read your name on the back of your jersey. He said, hey, my hair is my name. <laughs> yes, it is. That's great. One of the, you, you talk to him away from football, and, you, and it's almost like talking to a, a, a member of the clergy. I mean, the guy is so soft-spoken and so full of grace. Here's the throw, and Freeman connecting with Kellen Winslow. Fox makes a tackle. Winslow gains seven yards on the play. You know, it's rare that you see a defensive player come out of a game like a quarterback comes out of a blowout. You put your backup guy in to take the snaps for him. That's what Paul Amalo is, this Steeler defense. You know what? The game's over. Take him out. Sit him down. You've earned a rest. That's, that's rare. The last thing you want to see is you know how this team can change if Paul Amalo is out of the lineup, just like Baltimore with Ed Reed. Bob Sanders with Indianapolis. This ball goes out of bounds, and it will be spotted at the four. 11.35 to play, fourth quarter. 38-6, Pittsburgh. Thirty-eight six Steelers with the lead and the football inside their own five-yard line. What a performance today by this Pittsburgh team on the road. Taking on a Tampa squad whose confidence had been growing. Pittsburgh completely dominating on both ends of the football. On both sides, rather. First and ten. Mendenhall almost popped another one. Stopped by Rondé Barber, game five. Tomorrow, uh, TV's number one comedy is Charlie's brother finally moving out. Find out on a new episode of Two and a half men tomorrow, only CBS. What about this start for the Steelers? I mean, they look like they are in Super Bowl form, and they're playing without one of the best players in the NFL, yeah, Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, you got to tip your hat to Mike Tomlin, and, it, and it, they did get a break in one respect. They knew Roethlisberger was going to be gone, so they could prepare for it. It wasn't like an injury where all of a sudden he was gone. They worked towards being ready for him to be absent, and now they're reaping the benefits. Mendenhall running. Breaks it back. 
with a step. And lowers his shoulder, picks up the first down at the 20. Gains 10. Cleveland and Baltimore playing. Let's go back to New York and James Brown for an NFL update. Hey, Gus and Steve, Cleveland looking for its first victory of the season. Take a look, Seneca Wallace play action down here at the goal line. Little one-yard toss to Ben Watson. Kapanee, six-play, 86-yard drive. Key play was a 48-yard run by Peyton Hillis. Cleveland on top of Baltimore by three in the fourth. Gus and Steve. Let's All right, go. so the Browns trying to rally a little bit. Baltimore, that tough loss last week to Cincinnati. First down and 10 at the 19. Inside handoff. And this time, it's Redmond. And Redmond gets close to 10 yards on the play. They give him nine. Barber with the tackle. Let's look at the Steelers' schedule. What's coming up for him? So, yeah, and you see the highlight is when Roethlisberger's eligible to come back and play. And he's got two weeks to get ready. But then that, at three straight road games after coming back on the field for Roethlisberger, that could be a tough stretch. All this at someplace else, there's always problems in the NFL. Although, with the fans that they bring in with them, I don't know if they ever really leave home. Redmond again, and he pops it loose. Isaac Redmond stopped by Barber, but he gained 16 yards, and the Steelers have really poured it on the Buccaneers today with their ground attack, 177 yards rushing. Mendenhall, 121. Redmond, four carries, 29 yards. Batch even two carries, 26 yards. Yeah, and then this defense for the Buccaneers is really starting to pack it up. They know that the Steelers want to run the football. They're walking guys up. They've got eight guys in the box. Now nine guys. Mendenhall again. Mendenhall had to be taken down by Rondé Barber. But he gains 18 on the play. Smash mouth Pittsburgh Steeler football now. And this is Richard Mendenhall and what he's done today. Started off early on with a nice move inside for a first down, then powering his way into the end zone for the touchdown, following his blocker, and popping the big one down the sideline to set up. And then this last run, nine guys in the box for the Buccaneers, and he still squeaks through. Barber making this the touchdown saving tackle by the shirt tail. First down and 10 at the Tampa 38. Steelers eating up a lot of clock here, and Charlie Batch will call a timeout. 7.38 to play in the fourth. All Pittsburgh. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of The Home Depot. FedEx, we understand. You need a winning game plan. FedEx. And by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And welcome back. First down at 10 at the 38 for Charlie Batch and the Steelers. Offense, Richard Mendenhall has been sensational. 139 rushing yards. Inside handoff, Redmond this time. Now we want to take you back to take a look at an interesting moment. We told you about the two old veterans. Here's Barber and Heinz Ward and Coach Morris in between them. Yeah, now they weren't arguing or going at it. Coach Morris wanted to talk to Rondé, and Heinz Ward wanted to talk to Rondé too, so he came over and they finished the conversation. You watch, now you know what's going to happen. Heinz is going to laugh when he leaves. You know he does. <laughs> he He's always, always smiling. Always. Always. The, it's Ronde kind of a, Barber, but it's kind of a crazy smile, Steve. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. what makes it interesting. Yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of a glaze over his eyes sometimes when he smiles like that. Second down and eight at the 36. Mendenhall. And he's taken down to the 33. I thought uh, Hines was interesting yesterday. He said he signed a new three-year contract extension, so he's going to try to live out that contract. And when it's over, he may... Uh, 
want to sit or stand next to us in broadcast. Yeah, he might. And, we, and, you know, you think he's been in the league so long and how many times he's gone up against Rondé Barber. And Rondé Barber said, oh, four or five times. The first time was in the 1995 Peach Bowl, and Hines was playing quarterback. Yep. So that's a lot of snaps between then and now for these two guys. Third down and four at the 32. And they're starting to chant, here we go, Steelers. Batch over the middle, picked off. His second interception of the day. Nicely done by Quincy Black. 6.03 to play in the fourth, 38-6, Steelers. Looks like that'll be it for Josh Freeman today. New quarterback in, Josh Johnson. There's number 11 in his third year. And he decides to run it and goes down at the 40-yard line. But let's take another look at the Charlie Batch interception. This one's right over the middle. And he just throws it right to him. I mean, Quincy Black wasn't moving anywhere. Catch made this time by Aurelius Ben. Ryan McFadden with the tackle, but it's a 13-yard game. So Tampa picks up the first down. Now for this Buccaneer team, you know, sometimes, Steve, they say you have to be able to beat or compete with a good team to become a good team. I think they found out some valuable things today about where they are right now. Well, they're continuing to get better. And, I, you know, we spoke to Mike Tomlin yesterday. And, and, of course, these head coaches and all the coaches look at a lot of film of their opponents. And he went back to last year, and he said things changed in Tampa Bay when number five got on the field, Josh Freeman, and Ray, Raheem Morris started calling the defenses. Nice throw by Josh Johnson. You can see it on film. Their opponents played when Raheem Morris took over the defensive play calling duties from Jim Bates uh, midway point thereabouts last season. And then he put Josh Freeman on the field. And when those two things happened, everything changed in Tampa Bay. Now, they didn't start winning immediately, but at the end of that year, they went 2-1 and one in their last three games, beat the eventual world champions, and have carried it over into this year. Flag on the play. Offside, number 92 defense, five yard penalty, repeat third down. That's James Harrison. And this is Josh Freeman. Some of the pressures that he's faced in the pocket today. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are, have been, and, and will continue to be a quarterback pressure team. Those are big numbers on the left. I mean, these are, that's a, that's the team that wins right there. Third down and two at the 40 yard line. Johnson in for Freeman, that ball is caught. Aurelius Ben plucked it out of the air, another tip. He picks up 10 on third and two. And now the football's at the 30. Well, what we've seen it a couple of times. Somebody's going to tip the ball in the air and somebody else is going to catch it. It's happened three times in this game, all for big plays. That was a big third down conversion. Johnson down the middle, caught again. And this time it's Jeremy Stevens. Josh Johnson appeared in six games while making four starts in his career. And he's out of San Diego in his third season, not having a problem moving the football. And they hand it off, and it's Ernest Graham. Graham gets inside the five. Raheem Morris watching his team. And, he, you know, I'll tell you, Gus, you know, a lot of fans, you know, some of the fans here in Tampa have kind of left, you know, this game, their team's not going to win. This team, and particularly with Raheem Morris as head coach, they're going to continue to fight and get better. They're going to use this film in a way that's going to help them get better. 
And I've said it a lot, Gus, as you see him trying to get in the end zone right at the end. You know, Peyton Manning once said to me, he learned more football, more good football in the fourth quarter of bad football games in his early years than he did at any other point because he got a chance to drop back and read and just keep working at it in a game that was already decided. And I think you can see the Bucks continuing the battle here and, you know, finding some things out about themselves. They, they were up against a very big measuring stick today in this Pittsburgh Steelers, and they found out they've got to work on some things. Third down and goal at the one. Ernest Graham in the backfield. And Tampa calls a timeout. 2.15 to play. 38-6 Pittsburgh. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Sprint, the Now Network. And by Subway, home of the famous $5 footlong. Subway, where winners eat. And welcome back. Tampa trying to punch it in. Third down and goal at the one-yard line. LeGarrette Blunt comes in. They give it to him, second man through, dives forward, and he won't get in. So that'll take us to the two-minute warning, and the Buccaneers have a decision to make. Two minutes to play, 38-6, back after this. Buccaneers going for it on fourth down and goal at the one-yard line. Blunt. And he doesn't get in, or does he? Yes, he does. The Garrett Blunt, second effort. And the Buccaneers punch it in. It was a good, hard run by Blunt. Looked like they stopped him, stopped him again. He sidestepped once and made the final lunge. Gets a congratulations from Morris. Here's a flag down, though. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 70 of the offense. Penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. That's Donald Penn, the left tackle. He doesn't look like he's quite finished with his argument. But Garrett with his first career touchdown, 38 to 12. And the extra point is good. Take another look, some hard running by this rookie out of Oregon. Well, it was well defended at the point, and while she comes in, they're going to stop him short. Well short, keeps going, keeps fighting. And I think just because there was so much trash inside there with the pile of humanity, none of the pursuit could get over to actually help out at the end. And he just kept fighting. And once he gets over, he finally extends the ball over. And it's, those things happen so quick, there, there's usually never any pursuit until it really gets held up and on that. The Steelers couldn't get enough guys over there once the initial contact happened to help keep him out of the end zone. So Tampa will lose its first game of the season. Let's take a look, rather, at what's coming up for them. Well, there's a couple of playoff teams from a year ago. And then St. Louis, Arizona, Atlanta. Strange at this point of the season, you really still don't know exactly what kind of football team you've got. And you still got guys who are either starting just getting acclimated to being a starter, a little bit like Josh Freeman, the quarterback for the Bucks. And then you've got guys who are, you know, filling roles, backup roles or secondary roles that they haven't had a chance to do in years past. So you really don't know the personality of, of your team. Raheem Morris told us, you know, if you play hard, if you play fast, if you play smart, your identity will take care of itself. Antonio Brown back deep. 
fields the line drive, gets to the 40, and goes out of bounds close to midfield. Now don't forget, coming up next, Peyton Manning and the Colts travel to Denver to face the Broncos while the Chargers take on the Seahawks, or it's the Raiders and the Cardinals. Check local listings. Five yard penalty from the previous spot and we'll re-kick. We're gonna re had a penalty there, and now we're gonna re-kick the football off. I did not see a flag at all on that. But they will line up once again. And I'll tell you, I don't think the heat was as big a factor as it could have been today. Gussie, it's interesting that the Steelers come down, they've got to wear those black jerseys, and if you think it doesn't make a difference, believe me, it does. But the Steelers did something interesting. They brought some, some big sheets of plastic or something that they've got guys holding, and the players are sitting in the shade. You see, I don't know what these guys are making. Give them a game ball. But yeah, give them a game ball. But, you know, it ain't enough today. It is hot out. And you see them just standing there making sure that the players have, and it, I'll tell you what, the shade makes an enormous difference on a day like today. And don't think that the Buccaneers didn't feel like they were gonna get an edge wearing all white and making the Steelers wear those black uniforms. Didn't turn out that way. So the penalty was declined, and now the Steelers come to the line of scrimmage. Charlie Batch, what a day for Charlie Batch. You have to be happy for a man. As poised and unselfish as Charlie Batch has been during his time with the Steelers to be able to come in and have this kind of day. Three touchdowns. Look at that passer rating, 106.5. He threw an interception on their first series. Didn't look back pretty much after that. 12 of 17. Running game got going. Well, you know, it's a, you know your defense is playing extremely well when you only have to throw the football 17 times. And he was very efficient. Mendenhall ran well. Mueldy Moore ran well. Redmond ran well. Got help from everybody. Their offensive line played extremely well up front. Extremely well. Adams, Ligurski in the game for Trey Essex this week. Pouncey, Kemoyatu. Starks. How about Kiesel with the big touchdown off the interception? Just like that, folks. The Steelers are 3-0, and and Big Ben is still at home. And this was, I, I got to tell you, everybody thought this was going to be a 10-6, 9-6 game. And uh, the Steelers came in and, and really dominated this from start to finish. That'll do it. As the two coaches who are also like blood brothers, vacation together, hug each other in the center of the field. This time it's the older brother that gets the best of the younger brother. And Charlie Batch, how about it? Terrific day for the veteran. Final score, 38-13. Doubleheader action continues next. Colts, Broncos, Chargers, Seahawks, Raiders, Cardinals. For Steve Tasker, this is Gus Johnson saying so long from Tampa. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.